like you like someone like had the brush in their face then they were going back in there and then they like had their brush in their face again and then i realized like oh oh like that actually is like pretty disgusting like um oh uh, yeah oh we're gonna we're gonna piss some people off with this yeah one, but, but that's okay <laughs> Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to Soap Thing Thoughts, Episode 8. Joining me today is Aaron from Double A Shaves. Welcome to the Soap Thing Project. What is going on? Thank you for having me, Ben. Appreciate you uh, setting this up. Uh, nothing too much, man. Just, um, just got home from work tonight at uh, around 9 p.m. And um, yeah, it's now 11 p.m. here in Pennsylvania. So uh, I'm usually, I'm a night owl. So you know, that's uh, when I can think the most clearly at night. So we're actually doing this at a good time. I guess, uh, I guess I know for you, it's like a seven in the morning over there in Turkey. So that's I appreciate, right. appreciate being flexible. I'm curious how you got into this, uh, this thing where you shave on camera. Like, <laughs> how did that all get, all get started? What was your, your big uh, push to you? Like, you know what? I want to shave in front of a camera for the whole world to see. What was that? How'd that get started? Well, yeah, I guess um, I guess before I started shaving on camera, I was kind of into the hobby for, oh, I'm just going to, I'm going to guess like two years or so. Um, and I was just, you know, I was getting all these products. I was, my first soap was from, uh, from Sterling. And then um, I think around the same time I got I, another first soap, it was from uh, Phoenix Artisan and Accoutrements. It was Cavendish. Um, and then I, I got like a Mercur 34C razor. That was my first razor. I think I or I actually got a Vanderhagen razor a little before that, you know, the one from Walmart. Yeah, the TTO um, razor. Yeah. And then when I first when I first started using it, it like it was like cutting me up a lot. And I like quickly switched over to the uh Mercur 34C after that. But anyway, um I was like, I didn't really know anyone else who was like really into the hobby. I mainly got into it from, uh, there's a forum on Reddit called Wicked Edge, which uh, I was kind of, I, I used to go on Reddit a lot. And one day I just came across the forum and I was like, huh, like uh, there's this whole thing for shaving and it's something I do every day. And I didn't really like it. So when I saw it, I, um, yeah, well, well, no, you know, like normal shaving was kind of like a hassle for me. So when I saw this forum on Reddit where they had all this cool gear and this vintage gear, I was like, oh, I could just I could turn something an everyday mundane activity into, you know, something I could actually enjoy and I guess some pleasure out of. So I guess uh, I got my gear after kind of seeing that forum. And then I guess since uh, no one else, I really. I didn't really know anyone else who was in the hobby. And I guess because of that, um, that's kind of why I started to make videos. I wanted to engage with other people. And there's some content creators I had been watching before I started making videos. Like I was watching IMCDB, uh, stuff like that. I think um, I was watching another guy named, I haven't really seen him around in a while, but his name was Silky Creamy. I was watching some of his soap reviews. I don't know if you remember him. Um, yeah, Silky Creamy, like he fell off the face of the earth. I'm, I'm still curious what happened to them. Like he was there and then he wasn't. Yeah, I, I know, I know. I'm, yeah, I hope he's okay, like wherever he is. But yeah, I was kind of like watching some of his stuff, and um, I would comment here and there on like his videos and like IMCDB. I would comment with my old YouTube channel, and I figured, hey, like, man, there's a. I just noticed there were a lot of people in this community, and like there was on the YouTube community, like there were a lot of people into it. And um, I just had a passion, started getting a passion for wet shaving. And I just wanted to really engage with people. Um, and that's kind of why I started up the videos. It wasn't, you know, it was never for subscribers or anything like that, or uh, never about like a numbers thing. I just wanted to simply talk to other people about the hobby. And um, it's really kind of why I started making, making videos. And 
on my first video I, I uploaded a little over a year ago i forget exactly like what month but um two people like commented right away i was like wow okay like i don't know how they found it i had like two subscribers but um yeah once i got those first comments it was just like man i just like again it's not about i didn't care about subscribers or you know numbers whatever like just seeing their comments and engaging with them uh youtube is just a good way to talk to other people in the hobby so yeah yeah you're absolutely um, right i mean <laughs> me, yeah. me personally i i mean if it was a binary proposition which i know it's not i would rather have uh I'm up to 500 subscribers right now. I would rather have 500 subscribers or I would rather have 500 viewers and no subscribers than have 500 subscribers and no viewers. Like uh, I care more about right. if you're watching and if you're engaging than if you're physically connected, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Like, like for me, it's just, it's just completely about, um, yeah, like you said, just, just like the viewers and just like the regular people who come to comment and just, you know, even like, uh, you know, non-regular people who come to comment. That's just my favorite part of it is just like getting into discussions about the hobby. And, um, yeah, I just, I don't really pay, you know, too much attention to like, yeah, like number of subscribers or stuff like that. I think YouTube like tr wants to, have you focused on that? Cause it's, I don't know. It's like part of their addictive kind of thing, but you know, I just, I just like the engagement of the community on YouTube and uh, that's kind of why I keep doing it, you know, it's, uh, cause we're a small hobby. So. Yeah. It's, it's kind of funny that you mentioned that. Oh, if only, you know, the episode that just came before you, you you'll see it, you'll see it soon enough. It'll, you'll be, you'll be rolling on the floor laughing. All right. Let's uh, let's segue into the topic of this video to tub load or not to tub load to be or not to be not to be that is the question yes so we're obviously talking about uh people who load directly into their shaving soap tub versus people who scoop it out and put it into a bowl, put it on their palm of their hand, put it directly on their face, you know, wherever. Um, I know that you are a bowl lather. Have you always been that way? Uh, no, no. So in the, I think like in the first two years of my hobby, a lot of which was, yeah, like before I started making videos, I was kind of strictly um, doing the tub lathering. Like I would, uh, I got some gear here. Let me, um, let me find like a, uh, I was also a tub lather initially for like the first uh, year that I was doing this. Yeah. Right. I think, I guess most people were kind of, uh, doing that. I thought I had a, oh yeah, here we go. Like ghost town barber. Um, yeah, this is kind of one I've had for a while and there's a little bit I scooped out for the bowl in there, but most of this you can kind of see like, yeah, this is like a heavily kind of tub, tub lathered. Um, yeah. Soap here. I've had this one for a while. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I guess like probably like a lot of people in this hobby, I never early on, I just didn't really uh, know about bowl lathering. I didn't really have a bowl. So I just kind of, um, I didn't even really look up like great ways to tub lather. Like I literally just, I think I saw like one tutorial on YouTube. So I just got my brush like soaking, soaking wet. I would just like, you know, go in like a, my Sterling tub. I would do like 40 swirls until like there was like a ton of soap, like falling over the edges and everything. And then I would just kind of, um, once it was kind of on my face, I didn't add, I wasn't really, like really adding more water after that. I would just kind of like, like aggressively load in the tub with a super wet brush, get it on my face. And that was that. And at the time, like, I guess with the Sterling, um, at the time, like the Sterling, uh, red delicious was actually my first soap. They don't, it's discontinued now, but, um, you know, at the time when I was tub loading out of that, it was okay. Like I, there was definitely like some residual slickness. It was performing okay. But then other soaps like this Cavendish here, 
Yeah, I got this around the same time. I got my Red Delicious from Sterling. This was also like one of my first soaps. And um, this one's almost gone. It's like I almost killed that one. But right. um, but yeah, when I did the same thing I did with my Sterling tub in this one, like it would get on my, you know, I would just take a super wet brush, load it up for like 40 swirls. Uh, this is CK1. And when I put this on, it was just like super pasty. And I was like, what is going on? Like, I didn't really know anything about the hydration. I didn't really bother looking it up yet. Um, but yeah, it was like super pasty, dry. Like, it still shaved okay, I guess. But I just, at the time, I just didn't know how good. I just wasn't getting the most out of my soap um, from the, the tub lathering. And I was tub lathering for a while. Um, and I'm trying to remember when... <sighs> man um I'm trying to remember like kind of when exactly i got into bull lathering i think i it must have been from a couple uh content creators i was seeing at the time where they showed their process of like you know putting the soap into the bowl uh you know mushing it into the bottom and then kind of kind of doing it that way um right i forget yeah i forget who i was watching at the time but um yeah when they started like it w when i first saw them doing it like it made so much more sense because uh you know you could like i saw them start with like a not like a soaking wet brush like i used to when i was tub loading like they started with a kind of damp one and they showed the whole process they like put a little bit of soap in the bottom of the bowl um they started going at it and just kind of started adding slow bits of water um you know and they got like this at the end they it took a while but they got this like super amazing lather and i'm like wow like man if, like i really want to get the most out of my soaps so like yeah i like man i need to like get a bowl and i like want to start doing it this way because a lot of my tub lathering was just like just wasn't it just wasn't consistent, uh, kind of stuff like that. So I've actually had uh, several bad experiences with, uh, with tub lathering soaps. Like, uh, mm -hmm. we, we constantly say, well, we want to be good stewards of the community. Well, part of being good stewards of the wet shaving community is, uh, saying no to things that you don't think are good habits. Like, uh, we, we have devolved so far into it's your shave, do it your way, that I think a lot of us are giving a pass to unpassable habits that we that we really ought to be discouraging. You know, I mean, right. if like like what good is it to have this community of people if nobody's gonna be honest with each other? So my my whole view of tub lathering is if I could snap my fingers. And nobody would ever tub lather again. I would do it in a heartbeat. And, and there's yeah. a wide variety of reasons for it. Not the least of which is it's an insanely inefficient way to use your soap. You're going to end up using way more soap, activating more soap than what is necessary. So if you are, if you value fuel efficiency, then that's a, that's not a good way to to achieve that. Uh, the other thing is. Like I, I find it fascinating that I that people will tub lather their soaps and then try to sell it like on a BST or on like the Murphy and McNeil marketplace or something like that. Yeah. And and they have the nerve to think that people are gonna want to buy it. Now, some people do, but you know, most Americans, you know, if you double dip your potato chip into the chip dip, that's gonna gross most people out. But yet we think that. You know, if we, you know, bring a wet brush into a soap to our face and then back to the soap and then back to our face, you know, people, people don't think that that's kind of gross. That That's weird to me. Uh, yeah. It's actually, it's actually kind of ironic because, uh, because like over here in Turkey, the Turks will, will have lunch and they'll have this like gigantic single plate of food with usually like tava in it. And they're like double dipping in there and like dipping their bread and like all the all the same like sauce and they're like eating on it and double and dipping it in again. And it's, it's just like this grab 
this grab bag kind of thing. This free for all, it, yeah. Yeah, if most Americans would would see that and go, oh, but that that's that's uh like one time this is the funniest thing. Uh I was I was having lunch with them. This was a couple of years, a few years ago, the last time I was here. And uh, I kind of mentioned the whole double dipping thing, and I was like, uh, "Well, you you know, why are you you know eating out of the same uh, plate as he is? You don't know where he's been." <laughs> and the guy was yeah. like, "Yeah, I do. He's been at work with me all day." <laughs> so that's yeah. Um, I, I got another reason that's a little bit more complicated. But what do you what what is your position on all of this so far? Uh, yeah, Ben, I I couldn't agree more. Um, yeah. And, and it's funny when you mentioned the whole kind of double dipping thing and like the going in with your brush, going out of the brush. Um, Cause I, I, I'm, I'm actually guilty of like recently getting a used uh, Phoenix artist and accoutrement soap from Murphy and McNeil. And I thought, I guess, you know, obviously they don't say if it was like, you know, tub lather or bowl lather. And I thought just a couple, a little bit of soap was scooped out of the tub for it but it was like um you yeah, really rolled it, the dice with that uh, yeah i know i know i guess i wasn't really like i didn't really pay i just saw use and i figured out that like someone scooped out a little bit of soap or whatever but um yeah like someone had i could tell like someone had tub lathered it like a bunch of times and like you said they probably went we're going putting it on their face going back in the jar putting it back in their face going back in the jar and it's funny when i got the soap uh I was kind of looking at it and I guess at the time I didn't really like think too much about how gross it was, you know, but then my, my fiance like looked at the soap and she's like, wait a minute, like, like you, like someone like had the brush in their face, then they were going back in there and then they like had their brush in their face again. And then I realized like, Oh, Oh, like that actually is like pretty disgusting. Like, um, Oh uh, yeah. Oh, we're going to, we're going to piss some people off with this. Yeah. One, but, but that's okay. <laughs> Yeah. And then I think, um, I forget when, but, uh, Eric from better every shave, I was having like a, a conversation with him on like Instagram or something. And I guess we were talking about, or I think I told him how I was like, should I like cut off like the top of the soap? Cause like, it's kind of gross. And I actually ended up like taking a spoon and like just cutting off like a huge chunk of the top of the soap just for, you know, hygienic reasons. But yeah, no, like that's, I, I think you bring up good points. Like it, like it's not really like the most sanitary kind of thing when you lap, when you like load up in the tub like that, you know, and right. like, especially like when you go to sell it, it's like, I guess yeah. if you do, you should make people aware if you do sell it, like if you, you know, tub loaded it in it a bunch of times, but it's, no, yeah, it's yeah. interesting. You know, if, if you're going to own that soap like practically forever, then you, know, you obviously don't have to worry about this. But if if you're like most uh, hobbyists and soaps come and go, you know, if you tub lather into that soap tub, you're going to destroy the resale value. Like I yeah. lost track of how many uh, how many soaps I've seen on BSTs and on other marketplaces where it's like, I'm not buying that. That's gross. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I know a lot of other people feel the same way. Now, some people just don't care. They're like, what what's the matter? It's soap. Well, think about this. How many people uh, cut themselves shaving on the first mm-hmm. pass and then go in for a second pass? Now you're introducing blood into the soap. I really hope I'm grossing a couple people out because this is this drives me up a freaking wall. It, dude, it it needs to be said honestly. Yeah. Like this, like once you start really thinking about this, it's like wow. Like it it makes a whole lot of sense, and it's yeah, it is amazing how many people are like selling soaps out there or at least if they did tub lather in there like they should like i was saying earlier they should maybe take a little spoon and like cut off the top yeah you're you're right um another thing that i think a lot of people don't think about that is a serious problem that's going to bite some people in the ass eventually is check check this soap out right here just have a look for me i don't know yeah, what, see that. what do you notice of, what what do you notice about it yeah, to me, um, I didn't see the brand or anything, but from to me, it, that kind of looks like a fresh pour to me. Right now, look at look um, around the the top right edge. 
Notice how it's separating oh. from the inside of the jar? Yeah, yeah, I see that now. I have a few right. soaps that are doing that too now. Now, when you introduce right. water to shaving soap, what does it do? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually glad you brought that up because that was like another thing I was going to talk about why uh, I, I stopped loading in the tub because, um, yeah, I remember uh, when I used to watch IMCDB, he had a good point about introducing water to the soaps and like how it could just ruin it. Um, and th that's definitely a good point because a lot of these tubs, the soaps, like they're pretty big. They're like 5.8 ounces, five ounces. And like, once you introduce water, like you got that soap for a long time, there's going to be, and they're like now water's in that soap forever. Right. So, um, but, but when you introduce water to soap, what exactly does it do? It starts, it starts dissolving and gooifying the soap, right? Like if you were to take a little bit of shaving soap and put it on the tip of your hands and then right. introduce water to it, you know how it gets all slimy? Right. Right. So, uh, so let me, let me show you guys when, when this, I don't know if you can see that, but it's like right through, it's like right through here. Yeah. See how it's separating from the inside of the tub. Well, when soap starts to dry out, uh, this is, uh, this is perfectly normal by the way. But when soap starts to dry out, it will start breaking away from the inside of the tub. And when you introduce water to those crevices, it is extremely difficult and extremely time consuming to get that to dry. Like you could leave your soap hanging out like on your countertop for days and days and days and days, and that's not going to dry. And then if your puck is actually starting to break away from the tub on the bottom side, you are never getting water out of there. You'd have a better chance of getting struck by lightning four times on a sunny day. Like it, it, it's not going away. So, right. and then when water just sits there and sits there and sits there, and then further amounts of water get added to those crevices, what's going to happen is that can start to attract uh, bacteria, maybe possibly mold. Who knows what's going to happen when you leave watery soap laying around. Like people who, uh, when they're in the shower, who wash with a bar soap, and then they set that bar soap down on the corner of the tub, we all know what the underside of the soap does. It gets gooey and nasty and, and, uh, and your shaving soap is going to do the exact same thing. And so after a while of, of that stuff sitting like that, there are two things that I've noticed that happen. One is the fragrance oils can actually start breaking away from the, from the soap and pooling up in the center, especially if the center part of the, uh, where you've been tub lathering is lower than the sides I've actually seen fragrance oils start to separate and pool up in the center. And another thing it can do is to actually take away your scent and possibly even make it stink because now you've got bacteria building up and it basically renders your soap unusable. And if, and I think if, if that hasn't happened to you yet, then you, then you probably got lucky. That's, that's just my personal opinion on the whole matter because I've actually had soaps go way sideways mm -hmm. and end up uh you know smelling really bad or not smelling like anything at all and the fragrance oils will start separating out yeah ben those are all excellent excellent points like yeah like like it's crazy like the amount of reasons that i have for switching over to bowl lathering is like it's like there's you really touched on a lot of good ones um yeah, and it's funny, kind of as you were showing me that that soap, I kind of I pulled out my Seville here, which kind of it's got the ring of death, but you can kind of see it has that similar kind of thing on the side going there, where it's right. like got the got the crevice going on. Um, yeah, I've had this one forever too. Like this is you can tell like which soaps I have, which soaps I've had for a while, because like the ones I've introduced like a ton of water to. Um, right. Yeah, and also good point about the scent too, because. When I think about a lot of my old soaps that I have, like, you know, like Ghost Town Barber, for example, like this is one I've, I tub lathered in a lot. Like um, if I never, if I just scooped the soap out instead of tub lathered it the whole time, I mean, who knows how much better the scent could have been now, you know, because um, it is kind of, it's not, it's, it's still kind of strong, but like, who knows how good it could have been now if I never introduced water to it, you know? Right.
Um, and also, and like, what, oh, I'm sorry. No, like I said, this is perfectly common. Like those, uh, those crevices open up in a lot of soaps. Like here's a, uh, here's a uh, Highland Spring Soap Company that's got, it's starting to separate down here. You know, we've got, uh, you know, here's another one from grooming department where it's starting to separate away from the, uh, the sides of the tub. I, you know, I could do this all day. Here's, <laughs> uh, here's Noble Otter. That's, that's, that's really doing it. I mean, look at that. Wow. I mean, that, that, that's all a, a freaking water trap waiting to happen. Yeah, that's really. Cool. Like, and, and that's a big crevice too. So yeah, you have a good point. Like if, wa if a bunch of water gets down in there, it'll like get underneath it. And then I even, I don't have it with me, but I even got a tub from uh, like Oleo Chicago grooming. It's like, it's got the crevice, but it's also like a literally a loose puck. So it's like, you can shake it around it'll like fall out and it's like i can like hold the entire puck <laughs> yeah i was i was trying um, to get that this one to do it i've got a couple in my collection back in the states where you turn it upside down the puck just falls out this one's not quite ready but it's getting there yeah it's, i know yeah so yeah like all like really good points like when you yeah like one i couldn't agree more like once you start introducing water to these tubs like it's man it's just like it's just bad news and kind of one more thing like I guess kind of going back to like the gooiness thing, like this is my, uh, this is my cabin dish. This was like one of my first soaps and um, it's, you can't really tell just from looking at it, but this, this is one I had where um, you ever heard of blooming the soap? Yeah. Where you introduce yeah. water to it to kind of make the, the scent radiate and soften the soap. So it's easier to lather that sort of thing. Yeah. So I kind of fell into that trap like early on. I forget whose video I saw. Um, who was talking about it, but I tried it a lot with my Cavendish and you know how CK one is kind of like a softer soap base. So after I bloomed it a few times, it's just like, it literally just ruined the soap. Like it, it just, it got way too soft and gooey and then just, it just kind of turned into this mush. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So, Anyone out there who's uh, blooming their soap, um, you should stop doing that. <laughs> yeah, you should. You should definitely stop doing that. Uh, yeah. And, and to be honest with you, I I've talked to people who choose to tub lather, and I've never heard a good excuse for why they do it. It's mostly it's either that they think they're getting a richer load than if they bowl lather, which if that's your problem, then just add more soap to the bowl, or they're just cutting corners to save time. Like they like uh, you know I'm already you know shaving with a safety razor and double edge blades and using a brush and all this other stuff. It's like I don't want to add any more steps. And, well, then then you're gonna one day end up with uh, with an unpleasant surprise in one of your shaving soap tubs, and it's gonna it's gonna make you angry. Yeah, I'm I know. Sorry. That's just how I feel about it. Yeah, I wish more. You know, I wish more like casual shavers were kind of. Um we're, we're kind of aware of that, you know, it's, it's definitely, yeah, it's, it's, I, I, my guess is a lot of people do it just to save time. Um, but you know, again, I think if, uh, if you're like into the hobby and you like it, I, I mean, you should want to get the most out of your soap. Right. So, um, it, it doesn't help that a lot of artisans, when you go into their, uh, recommended use like their instruction page on their web page they actually say to to tub load and they describe how you should do it i really wish artisans would quit doing that yeah that you know that is a very good point yeah i've seen a lot of artisans where yeah like on on the, the soap instructions it'll say like oh do like 20 swirls with the brush or something like that but um yeah like man i could just like i could just go on and on about like why Tub lathering is bad news. I mean, yeah. in our and, opinion, and, you know. But, yeah, in, in our opinion and, now, uh, yeah. like I said, uh, once you buy it and it shows up on your doorstep, it's yours. You do whatever you want with it. But, uh, but I think we have to bring attention to the fact that if you really want to be a good steward of the, of the wet shaving community, then I think more people need to be giving as polite as possible, constructive criticism. 
You know, right. I've had people come on my YouTube channel before and say, you should try doing this this way. You should try doing this that way. And I try my hardest to humor uh, what they say. And sometimes it works out for the better. And sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes I just already know better. It's like, yeah, I've tried that before. It doesn't work. But I, but I give them the time of day and I, and I try my hardest not to uh, blow off their, their opinion as inherently unuseful. Sure. And if I, and if I've ever done that, well, then I apologize. But, but I, I think uh, we need to be better at accepting constructive criticism and better at, uh, at giving it like, one of the fallacies about it's your shape, do it your way, is if you color outside the lines enough, almost everybody is going to objectively say you shouldn't do it that way. Like if I were to take this shaving soap tub and just grab me a handful of soap and yank it out of there and just smear it all over my face, literally everybody in the wet shaving community would say that is not how you're supposed to use that. So I think... Uh, I think we need to draw the line a little bit lower than that kind of standard and say, look, you know, it's your, it's your, it's your shave, it's your products. You bought it and paid for it with your own money. But I think you will have better success not doing it the way you're doing it. I think part of being a good steward of the wet shaving community is sometimes you have to be dad and say, wait a minute this is not the way you should be doing this. Like that's yeah. just, that's just how I feel about it. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think there's really good healthy ways to do constructive criticism. Like obviously you can do it in ways where it doesn't come off as mean or whatever. Um, but yeah, I agree. I think uh, everyone in the hobby, especially new people, if we want to get everyone to, to like a comfortable spot, in their shaving journey. Yeah. We definitely need more of that kind of, um, kind of discourse and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, a hundred percent. Yeah. I think there are, I think there are a lot of people who are kind of, kind of afraid of the whole constructive criticism thing, but I mean, it, yeah, like there's, there's good healthy ways to do it, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I couldn't agree more, Ben. I think that's a really good point. Now, before we get out of here, you mentioned off camera that you wanted to talk about blades for a minute. So what do you want to know? Pick my brain. Uh, yeah, you know, so, so even though I've been in the hobby for a few years, I I don't know, like blades are really starting to fascinate me. Like I have, you know, like everyone else in the hobby, I've gotten sampler packs of like all the best kinds, like Astra, Treat, like... Gillette, NASA, Menorah, like you name it, whatever. Um, and I don't see a huge difference between a lot of blades. The only ones I did not like were these ones, the Sharks. Because uh, right. the, these gave like a noticeably bad shave. But um, I don't know. I guess all the other ones, like I don't, I don't really see like a huge difference in like how they shave. Um, so I guess, I don't know, I get, is there, I guess, do you have, do you kind of agree with that or do you have like certain ones where they're like noticeably better than others and do you uh, have, like, one you hate? I don't know. There are blades off the top of my head that I can recommend that are extremely consistent. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Here's here's my personal opinion about braid blades, with a with a few rare exceptions. Like for example, I used Merker blades, and I used a whole pack of them, and every single one of them were extremely tuggy and very unpleasant. Like they were just not sharp at all, to the point where it actually physically hurt to shave. And I think I've had one other brand that I can't think of that uh, that was the same way. Most blades are going to shave good. Like uh, they might be a little too mild for you. Like they might not feel sharp enough and or or smooth enough, but they're not going to be way outside of the realm of, of, a, of a tolerable experience. 
like for example, uh, Lord Blades and uh, the Rapira Swedish Super Steels. I'll get a decent shave out of them, but it's just like, eh, I would prefer a sharper blade, maybe something that's a little bit smoother. I've always been a big uh, proponent of uh, the Gillette Menorah blades. They're not the, the sharpest or the smoothest blades I've ever seen. Sure. Yeah, those, but they're very, mm -hmm. they're very, very consistent and they're a very forgiving blade. Like I very rarely nick myself or cut myself shaving with those for reasons that I, I still don't understand. They're just very consistent and they're a very forgiving blade. Uh, Gillette Platinums mm. uh, have always been the same way. Like uh, they might not always give me the best shave, but uh, pretty much every single one of them is going to come out of the pack, at least in my experience, and shave about exactly the same. Most blades, mm. uh, you have to remember, uh, blades are sharpened uh, on a sheet where it's just like this mile long strand of blades that haven't been cut yet and they just get fed through a sharpener. And uh, they're made out of really cheap sheet steel. And most blades are going to have slight variations in the shave quality from one to the next. And that's part of the reason why I don't tend to use the same blades, excuse me, over and over and over again, shave after shave after shave, is because I can pick from the Maxpedition blade bag. And more than likely, I'm going to get a shave that's going to be okay. Like uh, if I were going to get rid of blades, I know which blades I would prefer to keep around. But very rarely have I experienced blades where it's just like, Ugh, I can't stand that. Like uh, I've been shaving with these uh, Muster, Muster blades that have only been able to find mm. in one place. And they shave perfectly fine. Like uh, I've, been, I've been more surprised by blades that shave good than blades that shave me badly, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, no, and and yeah, thank you, Ben, for uh, for kind of going over that. I I appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's just uh, it's just interesting. Like I I don't know. I find blades like I kind of I just find them fascinating, and just to see like which ones people like and dislike. Um, yeah, no, you're right though. I think there's I think there's certain blades that are, you know, more consistent than others. Um I think uh like feathers, you know, I've I've been liking those a lot. Like I because I noticed with those, like every single time I shave with them, I'm like they like rarely cut me up. I, I know they're considered like a really sharp blade, but um, you know, like they're pretty consistently like they give me like good comfortable shaves. Um, they're they're actually not that sharp. Like I don't, I, I really do not understand why so many people are so afraid of feather blades. There are much sharper blades out there. Yeah, I don't you know, see like it. So Sorry, like, yeah. I mean, for the most part, like like if you have really sensitive skin, then obviously one blade versus the next blade versus the next blade is going to matter a lot to you. But if you have even average skin. For the most part, a blade is a blade is a blade. And uh, like, I, I, like I said, I just really don't understand why people are so afraid of, of feather blades. I think other people talk about them like, oh, these are extremely sharp. And then people have that assumption about them before they even get a hold of them. Like, uh, I'm trying to remember yeah. what brand uh, this was, but I found some other uh, brand of blades that was uh, also from Japan, not Kai. It was some other one, that, uh, some lesser mm -hmm. known one that was way sharper than feathers. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. It, it, uh, perception is uh, and power of suggestion goes a long way in this hobby. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of talk about the dangers of feathers, but uh, yeah, it, you know, it's like, it's just a blade It you know, it shapes good. It's not, there's nothing uh, terrifying about it. No, I, um, the, the, what is going to make or break your shave a lot more isn't the blade. It's, it's, it's the razor is going to matter a lot more and your hand is going to matter a lot more. Like, uh, yeah, what's, what's going to make you have a good shave is you. Like you can dial in certain comfort aspects by having a certain type of razor and a certain type of blade, but at the end of the day, 
what's going to make you have a good shave is how you shave your face. But yeah, technique goes a long way for sure. Yeah, it does. Um, I don't know how much time we have left, but real quick question. How many times do you use a blade before you, you, uh, put in your blade bank, like three or four? Uh, when I, whenever I'm not like experiencing a new blade or testing a new blade, I will use it three times, then toss it no matter what, even if, I even if I have, you know, it's like, Oh, here's this shiny new blade that I've never tried before. Let me try it. I'm going to try shaving with it five times. Even if I get five good shaves out of it, don't care. Because the weakest link, the worst blade I've ever used, lasted me three shaves. So that's that's my cap. Because uh, when you know three shaves and done, I know that every blade I am likely to ever use is going to last three shaves. Right. And so that's just that's just where I cut it off. Right. Yeah, I'm I'm okay with uh yeah I'm kind of the same like like three to three to five I'm okay with chucking them after that because their blades are cheap enough where. I don't need to use one thirty times. Yeah, I mean, there, there are times where you know I'll have a after every shave, I take my razors apart and set them down on the counter, and I take the blade out to make sure it doesn't rust. And there are times where I forgot how many shaves I got with that blade, and I might end up yeah. shaving you know four or five, even sometimes six times with it. But if I'm conscious about it, generally I won't use one for that long. That's just that's just me. Yeah, it's funny. I have like this awkward little case where I forget how many shaves I got with these guys. And dude, there's like there's like 15 blades in here, and like it's just this awkward holding place where I got I like I think I got like two or three out of these, but I should probably chuck them. They've been in here for a while. This is one of those hard cases that like derby comes in. Right um, uh, now, one <laughs> of the last things I will say, and then we do have to get out of here, is that I. Uh, I do a lot of shaves off camera and I generally don't have more than one blade out at a time just, just for the sake of, because I don't want to forget that I use this one yesterday. Did I use that one? Like, uh, like how many shaves does this one have? out? No, like one yeah. blade at a time is out and I use it till I'm done with it. Smart. Yeah. So, okay. Well, it's time to do the frag out and get the heck out of here. What have you got? So I got Chiseled Face Ghost Town Barber. This is like one of, I only have two uh, colognes from Artisan Shave Makers and the other ones I have are like Davidoff Cool Water and Brute. Um, mm -hmm. but, but this Ghost Town Barber, this is my fiance's favorite scent that I have in my den. Um, and I had to get the cologne for it. So Yeah, I've smelled that before. It's kind of a, a dusty, dirty take on a, on a barber shop. Yeah, you know, yeah, chisel face, you know, it's got like the dirty kind of sense, but um, yeah, she just likes this one. It's like, it's got like white musk. It's got like leather gunpowder. It literally smells like a, like a barbershop in the old West. It's really, really good stuff. Well, spray it on if you haven't already. I'm going to, um, I'm going to use uh, this one right here. The Mancera Cedrat Boise. This is a Creed Aventus like scent. Oh, you can't go wrong. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a little sweeter. And uh, less smoky than Creed Aventus, but uh, other than that, it's a uh, strikingly similar. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I've I haven't smelled Aventus, but I've smelled um, Executive Man from Sterling. And man, yeah. uh, I think I just got a splash sample of it a while back, and even with the sample, I got a ton of compliments. Like, there's right. a reason. There's a reason why Aventus is like the most duped scent. It's just. It's a. It's just great it's just uh you just can't go wrong it's, it smells awesome now a little bit of trivia um actual creed aventus is is very inconsistent from one batch of fragrances to the next and so a lot of older dupes of of creed aventus like sterling executive man fine platinum uh ethos success will tend to be smokier and that's because they are being duped from older uh, versions of Creed Aventus back when Creed was cranking out really smoky batches of of Aventus versus like 345 soap uh, tight lines for example is a newer take on Creed Aventus and that one has almost no smokiness because newer batches of Aventus of Aventus are are a lot less smoky. That is very interesting. Yeah. So. I... <laughs> Cause, cause yeah. That's kind of the that's kind of the basic recipe for Creed Aventus is it's a uh, pineapple birch and smoke 
and a bunch of other things, but that's that's the the kind of the takeaway that a lot of people get from Aventus. Yeah, and I'm glad all these dupes exist because I don't I don't have the money to drop uh four hundred dollars on a Creed cologne. So <laughs> yeah. I mean um, if, if you shop at a at like great market suppliers, you can get them for 50, 60, even sometimes 70% off, but you got to really know what you're doing to make sure you get a real one. Right. And uh, right. that that's kind of a lesson for, for another day for people who are really experienced in fragrances. Like I'm planning on, I'm, I'm still hunting for a good deal on uh Creed silver mountain water. Cause I want to get one that's at a good price. That, that in my opinion is my, is the, is the best Creed is my favorite Creed. I, Aventus is, yep. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Aventus is good, but I think uh, Silver Mountain Water is more unique, and it just resonates with me more. That's that's just my my thoughts on that. So, yeah, you have any parting words of wisdom for the community before we get out of here? Uh, yeah, I guess I guess like I mentioned earlier in, at the beginning of the video, um, for those of you who are on the fence, if you want to start making shade videos, but you're on the fence, just go for it. Uh, we're a really good welcoming community, really, um, really positive community. And again, uh, with the videos, you know, I wouldn't focus on the numbers or the number of subscribers. Um, you know, even though it says subscribers like right there and like big numbers, like I wouldn't just focus on that. Just do it for, just do it for the love and the engagement. Um, in the comments and everything. And, right. I mean, um, subs subscribers have their uses. Like, like, I mean, well, the subscription model has its uses because people who are subscribed are more likely to have your stuff pop up in their feed and come back and re-engage on a repetitive basis. So sure, yeah. we're not saying you, sh you shouldn't subscribe or, or the um, content creators shouldn't care about uh subscribers but I th we, we think the, mo the more important thing is that you're getting engagement yeah exactly yeah um right i i think a lot of people like they like obviously the amount it, it is important um but you know i think um it's not the be all end all exactly yeah um and if look if there's a day you don't feel like making a video um, it's okay. You know, don't force it. Just uh, just do it when you want to do it. Well, Aaron, I want to thank you for joining me on the Soap Thing Project. It's been fun. You are welcome back anytime. I hope everybody enjoyed the video. This has been Soap Thing telling you, shave like you mean it. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Ben.